Welcome, pilots. Cosmos Kramer is on his way to the cosmic signature named the Yang Jung Ruins in Del Tol, where the final level 3 Galent Cosmos agent Sebast Mathon resides. With the agent sitting on a gate, it seems prudent to first explore what might be beyond it before we talk to the agent. The Serpentis have already cleaned most items of interest from these ancient ruins built by the Yang Jung Nation eons ago. Yet the peculiar force repeller remains, a strange device capable of holding back ships that try to approach it. The only way to get close to it is by shooting it first. And it looks like another pilot is in here. That yellow cargo container is likely the remains of the aforementioned force repeller. So we come back again the next day immediately after downtime. And another pilot is already in here. And yet another pilot the next day. Seems like a popular spot. We come back about an hour later to find the force repeller has respawned. Let's take it out and see what it is people are farming this site for. In the force repeller wreck, we find a Yan Jung microprocessor. We'll just keep that in case Sebast is looking for it. We return to the agent at the gate of the Yan Jung ruins. Path to Enlightenment. Deception. I am a professor of archaeology at the University of Kale. Behind this ancient gate beside me, you will find one of the most fascinating enigmas in existence. It is a small and seemingly insignificant object, but one that holds massive powers. The origin of this relic is still vague, though most now agree that it was built by the Yan Jung Nation. Perhaps you've heard of it? The Yan Jung Nation immigrated into our world through the Eve Gate eons ago. From where we do not know, though the fragments of text we've managed to translate talk about a mysterious Middle Kingdom. They settled here in Del Tol, though we suspect they also colonized other systems, even far off places. But what we've uncovered so far is here in the Del Tol system, especially on Del Tol 5 and 6, which seem to have been much more inhabitable back then. So what happened to the Anjung Nation, you must be wondering? Simply told, we do not know yet. Heck, I'm not even sure what the relic I just described to you was used for. I've been studying it for months, and still its purpose eludes me. It has some sort of a repelling force that's almost impenetrable. It also has regeneration mechanics and a perpetual power source, meaning it's as good as eternal. What the Anjung built it for or used it for is a complete mystery. Unfortunately, the Serpentis pirates have taken an interest in the Yangjung relics too. They've sent out dozens of treasure hunters and scavengers. They don't tolerate others to interfere with their efforts which explains why I'm hiding out here instead of being at the relic studying it. The Serpentis periodically send expeditions here and are always scouting the place. Their methods are crude, but they've got much more manpower and resources than I can ever dream of having. I've heard rumors that they've uncovered an important piece of the biggest riddle surrounding the Yan Jung nation. Over at Del Tol 10, close to the Stargate leading to Kola Li, is the entrance point to a Yan Zheng site that is possibly the largest Yan Zheng ruins in space still in existence. I can only imagine what riches might await there. The only problem is that a passkey is needed to activate the gate. And from what I've heard, the Serpentis are now in possession of one of the key elements in constructing one. You look like an energetic pilot. I'm interested in hiring you for a bit of work. The Serpentis Relic Hunters are operating from a base within the Skeleton Comet site here in Del Tol. I haven't been there myself, but somewhere within it you'll find a Serpentis Survey Site, which is the right place. 
Therein, the Serpentis store all the data and items they've found throughout the whole constellation. What I want you to search for is a map of some sort. I'm sorry for being so vague, but that's all the info I have. I'm sure you'll know what I want as soon as you see it. There's only one problem. The Serpentis are a paranoid lot, and they've encrypted all their data and storage containers. I hope you possess some hacking skills, or know someone that does, for that is what is required to get to the information I need. Get that map from the Serpentis and bring it to me, and I will reward you handsomely. I feel dirty having to resort to petty theft, but when you're up against scumbags such as the Serpentis, the only way to play a fair game is to follow their rules. We head back to station to switch to our hacking fit Brudix. Recalling from our prior scouting of the Skeleton Comet, the hacking containers in the Serpentis survey site require a data analyzer. We make our way into the site to find the room filled with wrecks, courtesy of the local farmers. And we use our cargo scanner to see if we can locate a casket with the map we need. Ah, there it is! The threaded waypoint map. We make a beeline for that casket to hack the container. Grabbing the map, we make our way back to Sebast Mathon. Oh yes! This threaded waypoint map is just what I needed. Now we're getting somewhere. If you're interested in getting to the bottom of this mystery with me, then don't hesitate talking to me later. Let's have a quick look at the implant we received as a reward. The Xenu Gnome Shield Upgrades implant would give us a 3% reduction in power grid needs of any module requiring the Shield Upgrade skill. This would primarily apply to Shield Extenders and Shield Boosters. Let's talk to Sebast again to continue our path to enlightenment. Destruction. The map you got me is only one piece in the puzzle of getting into the Hidden Relic Site. You remember what I told you about that strange device that lies behind this gate beside me? It is of Yanjung origin, and I believe it can give us another vital puzzle piece. In order for me to construct a usable passkey to enter the relic site, I need to understand better how the Yanjung nation approached technology. The Force Repeller has a microprocessor, which would give me just those insights. I am a hopeless fighter, so I don't stand a chance against the Serpentis ruffians in there. I need someone of your capabilities to get the microprocessor for me. So what you need to do is enter the Yanjung runes through the gate beside me. Take out the Serpentis scouts and proceed to tackle the Force Repeller. You can't get close to it while it's still active, so you need to shoot it from a distance. Once it blows up, get the microprocessor quickly before the regeneration nanobots kick in and rebuild the Repeller. Oh, and one more thing. The Serpentis periodically send expeditions to the ruins. I hope you don't run into them, but if you do, make sure you have plenty of firepower on your side. We switch back to our original Brudix where we stash the microprocessor we previously obtained. Here's the microprocessor, Sebast. Excellent work! Now let's take a close look at the microprocessor to determine if anything more is needed to construct the passkey. While he does that, let's take a peek at the Natura Warp Core Stabilizer Blueprint we received as a reward. It has three runs, and requires lots of Yanjung materials to produce. Using the Compare tool, we see that it has the same scan resolution and targeting range penalties as the Tech 2 version, but its CPU usage is much lower. We talk to Sebast again to see what he's learned. Discovery. The Yanjung were more clever than I gave them credit for, it seems. The microprocessor is highly advanced, and my analytical methods are limited in cracking its secrets. However, what little information I've managed to glean from the processor gives me hope that we can still solve this mystery. The encryption methods employed by the Yanjung Nation are in many ways similar to those used by a new strand of rogue drones that a colleague of mine have told me exist in this very constellation. My guess is that the rogue drones happened upon some lost Yanjung artifact here in Elgintel, and in assimilating it, learned some new tricks. 
But however it happened is beside the point. What really matters is that the local pirates that frequent the asteroid belts here in El Gintel have been harassing this new breed of drones out of fear it will grow to become too powerful for them to handle. And as pirates usually do, they loot those they destroy. This colleague of mine has been doing research on this new rogue drone breed, and he tells me that the drones have developed a sophisticated binary code to interact with the Anjung technology they assimilated. My theory is that if we get this binary code, we can use it to unravel the mysteries of the microprocessor in my possession. In doing so, we should have no problem in constructing a usable passkey. And the belt pirates, having hunted the new drones so excessively, are certain to possess this binary code. In essence, I want you to go into the asteroid belts and hunt down belt pirates. From what I've heard, the Serpentis are employing tough marauders to hunt the rogue drones, so your best bet is to focus on them. Return to me once you have the binary code, and I will construct a passkey that you can use. So we head into the asteroid belts here in Del Tol to see if we can find this binary code. After taking out a dozen or so Serpentis rats, we finally find what we're looking for. A sheet that can be used to decipher layered binary code with extreme ease. We return to Sebast with our find. Good work! I've constructed a passkey for the both of us. Head out to the Stargate leading to Kola Lee, and you should be able to enter the relic site. Good luck! Besides the passkey, we also received a Yan Jung Technology skill book. As we see by looking at the many blueprints we've received as a reward running Cosmos missions, that is a required skill to manufacture many of the storyline modules. Taking a look at our standings, we see a gain from 4.95 to 5.04. We now have enough to run regular level 4 missions for any Galent Corporation. I suspect that the remaining level 4 Cosmos agents, however, will require a standings of 6. Now that we have the passkey, in the next video we'll scout the Yanjung relic site here in Deltol. Thank you for watching my Galent Cosmos Mission Guide. If you enjoy my content, please let me know in the comments or by subscribing to my channel. The more I'm aware that people are watching, the more likely I'll be to make time to continue producing content. I've also begun creating a parody news series based on the Galent Cosmos missions. It's, it's called the El Gintel Gintel Fake News Network. The first studio, episode is loosely based on the events from the first Galent mission chain from part four of this series, titled Activist Fuel. Thanks again, and hope to see you back soon.